10. He's on his 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5. Three main engines up and burning. 2, 1. And liftoff of Space Shuttle Atlantis, opening a new chapter in the completion of the International Space Station for the collaboration of nations in space. World program here. Roger, roll, Atlantis. Houston is now controlling. Roll maneuver is underway. Atlantis is heading into a heads down position on course for a 51.6 degree, 137 by 36 statute mile orbit. Atlantis already two miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center at an altitude of 2.8 statute miles. Engines now at 72% beginning to throttle back up as the vehicle passes through the area of maximum dynamic pressure. Atlantis Houston, go at throttle up. All three liquid-fueled engines are back at full throttle. One minute, 20 seconds into the flight. At liftoff, the fully-fueled shuttle, boosters and external tank weighed about four and a half million pounds. It now has burned half of that weight in propellant. Solid. Solid rocket boosters are burning 11,000 pounds of propellant every second. Coming up on uh, 1 minute 45 seconds, standing by for first stage uh, separation of the uh, solid rocket boosters. Atlantis is at an altitude of 129,000 feet, 24 miles in altitude, 25 miles downrange. All three engines are still performing as expected. SRB separation and staging confirmed. All three electrically producing fuel cells are uh, operating as expected, as are the hydraulic systems, the auxiliary power units. Two orbital maneuvering system engines on the tail of uh, Atlantis now assisting with uh, the ascent performance. Those engines will burn for a little less than three minutes. Two minutes, 45 seconds, Atlantis, 61 miles from the Kennedy Space Center. Atlantis, Houston, two-engine Maroon. Copy, two-engine Maroon. Atlantis can reach Maroon in Spain in the event of a single-engine failure. However, all three are still uh, operating as expected. Atlantis, Houston, for Brent, high-load duct heater to Alpha slash Bravo. High-load duct heater, Alpha slash Bravo. Good copy, and we're seeing some ice in the high load fest. Copy, we'll watch it. That call relating to the flash evaporator system of uh, one of the uh, auxiliary power units, however, they're all working uh, properly. Three and a half minutes into the launch, 108 miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center. Atlanta's still performing as expected, 54 miles in altitude or 293,000 feet. Now traveling uh, 4,400 miles per hour. Atlantis, Houston, negative return. Copy, negative return. Atlantis can no longer return to the Kennedy Space Center now in the event of an engine failure. However, all three are in excellent shape. Flight control team is continuing to evaluating the flash Atlantis evaporator Houston system. L1, fast pry alpha to off, back to GPC. Okay, we'll cycle fast A off, then back to GPC. Good copy. That too. Uh, and that to cycle the flash evaporator system again, all auxiliary power units uh, still working fine, as are the electricity producing fuel cells. Four minutes, 45 seconds into the launch.
Atlantis is at an altitude of 65 statute miles downrange from the Kennedy Space Center, 225 miles, traveling 7,000 miles per hour. Discussions on the flight loop uh, relative to the flash evaporator system. The suspect, uh, a little bit of water in that unit, uh, but all continues to work uh, smoothly. Otherwise, five minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis Houston, press to ATO, select Istris. Press to ATO, select Istris. Atlantis can reach orbit on two engines should one fail now. Again, all three still Atlantis working fine. Houston. Single engine ops three. Single engine ops three. Approaching six minutes into the flight. Atlantis is now rolling to a heads up position. Traveling 9,400 miles per hour, 352,000 feet in altitude, or 66 miles downrange from the launch site, 390 miles. A little less than two and a half minutes of powered flight uh, remaining, all systems still uh, operating as expected. Atlantis Houston, press to Miko, and we're seeing good cooling on Fast Pry Alpha. Uh, press that call means that Atlantis can reach a safe orbit on two engines now. Again, all three are still uh, working fine. And Houston, we see a nominal shutdown plan. Atlantis, Houston, we concur. Your shutdown plan is nominal. Your go for the plus X, go for the pitch. Copy. Nominal shutdown. Go plus X. Go pitch. Good copy. And you are single engine press 104. Single engine press 104. Seven minutes, 20 seconds into the flight. Atlantis can reach orbit on one engine now should two fail. Again, all three still in good shape. The uh, call from astronaut Tony Antonelli here in the flight control room, a nominal shutdown plan means that uh, all of the uh, scheduled activities post uh, main engine cutoff are as expected to uh, photograph the external tank as it falls away from the orbiter. Brent Jett uh, in the forward uh, left seat. Chris Ferguson, the pilot of the mission in the forward right seat, Dan Burbank between them and behind them, and uh, Canadian astronaut Steve McLean uh, behind uh, pilot Chris Ferguson. Down on the mid-deck, Joe Tanner closest to the side hatch of the orbiter, and uh, Heidi uh, Stephanish and Piper in the, uh, down on the mid-deck with Tanner. Engines beginning to throttle back to lessen the uh, aerodynamic loads on the vehicle as it approaches uh, main engine cutoff. Standing by for that call. And main engine cutoff has been confirmed. ET separation confirmed. Atlantis now uh, off of the external tank. Uh, Commander uh, Brent Jett will fire the uh, Pulsey engines on Atlantis to position it for uh, photography of the tank as it falls away. Beautiful view of Atlantis as it uh, falls away from the tank. You can see the jets firing uh, those reaction control system jets to position the orbiter. Atlantis Houston, nominal MECO. Ohms 1 is not required and no action on the cabin DPDT. Nominal Miko, OMS-1 not required and no action on the DPDT, thanks Houston.